Hello everyone, welcome to another Making Monday Lovable video. Today's video will be a little bit different. Um, I won't talk about scientific illustrations, science, art, um, but I will talk more about something that recently happened to me, a situation that I had, that I went through, that then reminded me of my past uh, and what happened when I was a child, when I was younger. I have a dog, Buffy is her name. She's about eight years, she will turn eight soon and she's not sterilized. In Sweden, we don't sterilize the dogs just for preventing something. We don't have stray dogs here. Um, and because she is then going through heat cycles twice per year, she also has the potential of going through fake pregnancy cycles. And that's what happened one of the recent weekends. I immediately, when I woke up, I saw something is off with her. She's a high energy dog. She was completely in a totally different energy. And I immediately started to worry and wonder what it is, how it is. She shivered, she didn't walk, she wanted to eat, but she was totally off. And as we have a very close connection, I immediately felt it and I saw it, everything. So I was with her all day, the whole weekend, singing to her, taking care of her and all these things. We also went to the vet and the vet, um, and diagnosed her with fake pregnancy and prescribed her um, um, hormone medications and painkillers. We also then discussed surgery. And while with my mind and my head, I was thinking that's a good idea to do that because if something happens, maybe it's good to prevent it. I actually knew with my heart and with my soul that it's not the right decision. Um, and it took me a while, a couple of ups and downs and talking to people and actually listening to myself, mostly, first of all, what is it that I want to do? I, um, I decided against the surgery and try alternative ways, which I already am in contact with people and I will try this um, for the next cycle to see, um, to prevent this fake pregnancy symptoms in her because it is not a nice experience for dogs to go through that. And of course, I also told my family and my mom asked me about like, oh, how come you decided against the surgery? And then we had a video chat. And while I was telling her and sharing her all the things that I went through, you know, the ups and downs and the emotions and the crying and the, you know, feeling hurt and feeling all kinds of things. I saw that she herself was getting a red nose and her eyes would become watery and red. We're both and like she's a very emotional person me too and we have a very good connection so i immediately saw like you know it was it was resonating with her and while i was telling her all this and i was i was just saying like i don't even know how you did this when we were younger my sister and me like how did you go through that how did you manage to decide and she just said like well you know you just described all of it it is still a really big burden on me and what happened in our past is the following um, my sister and me both have a disability in my case it looks like this it's called split hand and foot malformation uh, so that means we just have it's a limb difference basically we have different fingers different feet for my sister it's three fingers three fingers per hand and we it's a genetic disease that we got in, that we inherited from our dad and when we were younger we went through several surgeries in my case, it was mainly the feet um, because I have very small feet. They tried to spread my two thumbs uh, a little bit apart so I have a bigger area to step on so I balance better. And then I had two minor injury, um, operations on my hand to just remove one bone that was here before that if I would grow, it would spread my and widen my hand uh, and make it more difficult for me because I'm right-handed whole pants and so on and so forth and the other operation was um, this finger here was a little bit more um, pointy and then the um, bone would rub against the skin and open a hole which would then get inflammated also not ideal so they cut off a bit of the bone so these were the surgeries that concerned me my sister um, she had a double thumb a double thumb is this so you see like here's the main middle middle hand knochen, middle hand bone. And then instead of having one thumb, it turns into like a double thumb with two fingers. She had that. And um, my mom used to go throughout all Germany um, with us and the surrounding countries to find the best 
surgeons for us because not everybody dares to operate on hands and feet like this and it should be the best with the best strategy um, and most experience because there is some people having this type of limb, limb difference it's not that nobody has it so my mom was putting all the effort into getting the best care for us that could be there and we were like in an elementary school so I still remember in like third grade or something I would go there with a wheelchair to school because both of my feet were operated at the same time anyways then it was discussed with two doctors about my sister's double thumb which strategy to apply to operate on it to make the hand more functional and Dr. A suggested the strategy A and Dr. B suggested strategy B my sister was you know and they decided for strategy A my sister was put in the operation room with my mom knowing that we the doctors will operate with strategy A that was what was agreed upon so this is what my mom knew would happen. She later on found out after the surgery happened that in the operation room, there was a big fight between Dr. A and Dr. B. And Dr. B threw out Dr. A with his strategy A that was told to my mom to be operated on her daughter and did his own strategy B. And he completely messed up the thumb of my sister. It's not functional at all. And with only three fingers per hand, you can imagine having a non-functional thumb is terrible. My mom went up to court. Everybody told her, you're not going to win. They will not say anything. It's about politics, about egos, about, you know, higher hierarchies, because Dr. B was higher than Dr. A. And um, knowing certain people, all of these things, my mom had no idea about. She found out later that Dr. B, A, told her, I have to constantly correct mistakes of Dr. B all the time. He never got per uh, persecuted uh, by his mistakes. Never. Nobody ever won. Nobody ever actually. I don't think that anybody went to court. My mom tried. She lost. And she still, and everybody told her after the surgery, seeing the x-ray pictures, seeing the hand of my sister, it's messed up. Every doctor would tell her this was done wrong. It should have been done like this. Still, she didn't. She didn't. Nobody, you know, he wasn't officially accused of doing a mistake. So this is something that my mom experienced with both of us. Um, at the same time, I was also under surgery or like in the hospital recovering from surgery. And my mom was the only one that um, would really take the responsibility. My dad was never a big part when it came to especially this topic. So she didn't have much support. So she was the one deciding that her underage, not even 10 year old kids will go on the surgery. So something is gonna be done. And afterwards it wasn't and it was destroyed. So on her conscience, it lies very heavy on her mind until now. And me talking about it over, you know, 30 years later with her um, and seeing how it was done back then, we consciously, we, we were not aware of it, my sister. I mean, none of us blames our mom. It's just what it is, but she has to live with it. And like telling her all these things about the surgery of my dog, it's not a human, like just brought up all of these mem memories and all of these feelings and all of these thoughts. And I just felt like, how do you even like, how do you manage? You know, I have a, such a hard time with my dog already. And I just wanted to tell to everybody out there that has any type of responsibility, be it kids or grandparents or own parents because they can't take care of themselves anymore or pets or communities or whoever it is that is in your responsibility because you're a guardian or a foster parent or whatever whoever it is like any decision you take with the best of knowledge that you have with the best in mind for that other being that you take care of is is the only thing you can do you cannot know what will be the consequences of of that what the future will bring what internal messes and issues exist i just want to tell to all those people like doing a great job continue and um yeah it's it's not always easy in life and this was just something i wanted to share with you today and yeah i hope you're having a nice monday and a great week ahead and talk to you next week bye